Hello, Steven here, and welcome to my video on the NiPy REST API. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need to do is set up our devel development environment. And that's pretty easy now. So I'm back in my sandbox direc directory here. And I've already got a cloned uh, repo for the Apache NiPy repo. Go on there. I just want to make sure it's up to date. So full. Good to go. We're all nice. So this video is about the API, so I want to switch to the API directory. And there are my files I need. And if you want to follow along with this one exactly the way it is, you can see inside the directory I have the compose file, which sets up our Docker compose, or Docker containers. And it's set up with a user password for single user credentials. Uh, I've got volumes created just in case I want to save this. And the ports mapped in the network setup. So I want to make sure I have my network created too. So if I go to my readme file, you can just go through. Uh, if you want to make sure that you can follow along exactly, you can see what I have installed, what I'm going to be using in the video, and how to set your network up as well. So we'll just do the Docker or Docker network create sci-fi. There we go. So we're good there. Docker compose up dash D. And if you need to, you can go to your Docker extension here. There you go. You can see it's running. You can even view the log. You can see how far along we are. Just want to make sure that it is gets to the point where we can get to the UI. And hopefully, it should be there in a little bit. All right. So shows the UI started which means that we want to make sure that we have the correct information for logging in. So it's admin and then whatever this long string is. And it's on 9443. And it's HTTPS as well. So let's go ahead and jump into the browser. And we'll do that. And we'll go to localhost 9443. And we have that in there. Jump in there. Advance. Accept the risk to continue. Here we are. We can just skip this part. You know, it's admin for the user, paste our password, log in. I don't want to save it just in case. Okay, here we are. We have a NiPy instance up and running. All we had to do is clone the repo, make sure we were up to date on it, start the compose file, and we're inside. So now we can go ahead and move on with the API. So let's jump over to the NiPy documentations. And under there, you can go down the left side under NiPy documentation, developer, NiPy API. And here we see we have the NiFi API information we need for endpoints and access from the API as well. And the API is really great because it can allow us to do things pro programmatically. So we can have other programs or whatever execute and retrieve information from the NiFi server environment. Or we could even start processors, stop them, uh, grab monitoring information if we want to do custom monitoring, stuff like that. The entire the entire server for NiFi is available for us to basically get information from and utilize our control. And it's all done in real time as well. So in order to get started with accessing it, which is really what we're going to cover here, is how to access it and show some examples of using a couple of different things. So first thing we want to do is we, we need to take care of the access part. And what we need to do is use the uh, token or we don't want that one, we want the token. So the endpoint access token. Now in here, it shows us the requests and then it shows us the response in the fields that we should be getting back. Also talks about it a little bit and what we need to do. So we can see the header body, the signature, the expiration of the token is contained within the body. It's stored in browser as a cookie. Okay, so we got the information we need here. So what we need to do first is submit our credentials, so our user password, uh, and get a token back so we can start utilizing endpoints with the token instead. Now, in order to do that, we want to use, we need to use something to go ahead and so we could curl all this if we wanted to, or we could use something like Postman, or uh, if you want to stick inside of VS Code, there's a nice one in there, so we'll go ahead and jump back over there real quick. Uh, so inside of VS Code, you have a nice one here. Uh, that's called Thunder Client. I've only used it a little bit, but I've started using it in order to stay inside of my VS Code. So under my extensions, I had that installed. And we go Docker here, or not Docker, 
You can see it has its own extension icon. And we can go ahead and start creating a new request in here. So you can see I have already got one created and I've already got a whole bunch of endpoints created in there. So we'll be able to walk through these. And what you can do as well is you can load this if you wanted to as well. So I can go up here, say, nope, not there. Selections, import. And then I can go find the file that I've labeled NiFi underscore REST underscore API, which is a JSON with all the, uh, and there you go. Now it creates a new collection and you can see you can get the same thing imported pretty quickly yourself and start utilizing it. Let's go ahead and walk through these and see how they work or how they're set up. I guess I'll do that later. So first thing is the token. So, oh, well, we have this first one that doesn't require anything. It's just the, uh, in order to access the endpoint, it's always a uh, forward slash NiFi dash API forward slash, and then the endpoint you're trying to go to. So if you remember our example, uh, if you go back to the documentation, there's a list, one was called access forward slash config. We can see that and see what the current status is. Config support log, supports logins, true. Okay, that one doesn't need anything. Now let's go ahead and get a token because this would be pretty, this is one of our most important parts we need to do. So inside of here, we have the query parameters and we have two parameters created. One for, so this is our user credentials. We have admin or password. Headers, we have just content type if you want to explicit, make it explicit. And then skip off, go to body. We don't need any of these for this one. We just need to pass through uh, the primers, user, and password. You can see it builds the URL up here at the top. We can click send. We get our response over here on the right side. And it gave us back the token. So now we can take that token, copy that token. And let's go ahead and look at something like the expiration. So inside of the expiration, because uh, we want to know, maybe you want to know how long this is going to last for. So go to expiration. Uh, you can create your own if you need to as well, just by going here, saying new request, and start populating it from there. Uh, but we use the one I already have configured for you so you can get started pretty quickly. Under the header section, so this one requires, uh, as a matter of fact, we'll just jump back over there real quick. So we go to close that one. We want to look at expression. It says this point is subject to change, and if I rest API evolved, yep, got that. Okay, so all we need to do. Yeah, you know, this one's not documented very well, <laughs> but I'll just tell you, or it could be a little bit easier. It doesn't have the request part in there, right? Like you do with everything else. So this one's telling us to request for a token. We need to provide a parameters or username and password. It needs to be in string format. Okay, nice and easy. We can do that. Uh, if we want to use the next one, we can do that one too. Get the expression of the current token. So we'll go back over to VS Code. And the way you're gonna pass it in here is inside of headers, it needs to be passed. Your token gets passed in there. You'll create a header called authorization. You create a header called authorization. And from here, it needs to be start soft with the word bearer. And then you put your token in there. So we'll put the new token we have. Oop, that is not the token. Let me go back to get that token. Jump back over here. Okay, let's copy this. Response. Go back. Did I get it right this time? Okay, now we got now we got it. Okay, so now we can see the URLs created, token expiration, header is created, we have authorization, click send, we get our response back. So access token expiration, here's the date. Uh, in this case, the server is set up on UTC. So we know that's when we'll get the, uh, that's when it expires. All right, let's go ahead and jump back over and look at another one. So the next example we'll look at is, let's look at system diagnostics. And if we jump to the documentation, which is gonna be extremely helpful for figuring out how to do all this, we can close the access section and the diagnostic was under system diagnostics here. There's one in here. We can click on that and see it consumes. Uh, we can pass the system diagnostics is the endpoint. 
And then we have the option for, uh, so you can see uh, node-wise, whether or not to include the breakdown per node, optional, and uh, node cluster, uh, node ID or cluster node ID, the ID of the node where to get the status. In this case, we don't have one uh, because we're not in a cluster and it should return the information down below here. So we'll go ahead and do that. Jump back over into VS Code. And we can get started. So this is my Gnostic, I already have it created for you. You can see there's a query parameter here. Underneath header, all we have to do is provide the authorization and there's no body. So we can go ahead and click send. System diagnostic is already in here in the URL. So I've already got that populated as well. Click send. So got to remember, I need to get the new token. So I'll grab the new token. And remember these are all, these don't have tokens in them. Go back system diagnostic, auth, or header. These are all old tokens. Put that in there. Let's send, and there we go. So we just got the system diagnostic. So you can see where this would be helpful. Maybe you're wanting to scrape the server and pull down the diagnostic information so that you can log it yourself into some, some custom uh, database or something like that. So it gives you all the information you're looking for, storage, uh, garbage collection state. So pretty helpful. It even tells you about the box itself that's it's running on, right? So we know the time or the build time branch information uh everything we need to know here wsl2 yeah that's kind of nice to know provide a bat but there we go even what version of uh i we're running or the ni5 version which is 1.18 and the java version 1.8 as well so helpful information you can get here you can use for whatever you need to do now let's get some let's do some more interesting things like let's work with processors so Let's go back to the documentation here and see what we have for options on working with the processors, uh, which will be a lot. All right, get rid of that one and let's go ahead and look at processors. So we have post, we have post gets put deletes in here. Okay, so we can get a processor, update a processor, delete a processor, and a couple other things as well. Descriptions, diagnostic information about the processor. Uh, look at that one. See, processor ID needs to be provided, and I'll show you where to get that from if you're not familiar with NiFi that to that extent. And NiFi, and then you have the response back that you'll be showing as well. And here's the endpoint. So the endpoint is forward slash processor. The ID of the processor, which is the parameter that you're going to be passing. Sorry, every time I click on that, it goes away. Uh, and then diagnostics. So let's go ahead and look at what that will look. First of all, we need to create some processors, right? We got a blank canvas here. Let's go ahead and create something real fast. So we'll drop a processor. We'll say generate. Uh, we'll do flow file. And we'll just throw into a log attribute. Drop it in there real quick. Success. Now I don't want to spam like crazy here. So we'll change our scheduling to one every second. And let's give it some information here. So what I'll do is NiFi NiFi uh, expression language and jump in here. And there is some fun ones we can use here, which is uh, Nexent. We'll just use that. That way we know every time we pull one in, it's a different one. Uh, so Nexent here, we'll just grab the verbiage we need. And then let's go ahead and go back to NiFi. Oh, I think we do one. Is that right? I can't remember, I haven't used this one in a while. Let's go ahead and do that, we'll run it. Oh, I did that wrong. Okay, we can look at these real quick. Zero. One. All right. So it should be continuing every time we make a new flow file, it should get a new number. Okay. So we'll go ahead and empty that. We can see our state or processor is stopped. And I'm just going to disable that. All right. So first thing we know we need is we're going to need the processor ID we want to 
manipulate. So we can go ahead and click on it. You can see over here, we have a processor ID listed here. You can copy it there, or you can go ahead and configure, go to settings, and then you see the ID is listed here as well. So either spot works. Now we can go ahead and jump back over to VS Code. And from here, we can go ahead and use the, get the status of that processor, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So the ID, we have the endpoint set up. We can see API forward slash flow forward slash processors forward slash parameter or parameter or, or variable for the parameter that we're creating down here called ID. So ID is in there and status. So we'll go ahead and replace this. And then from here, we need to continue to pass the authorization. So we need our token. So we'll go grab that real quick. Jump over to processor again, replace that one. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go do these other ones real quick too. Place this one. And then I won't have to remember it later. All right, so this one's set up. Brandmer's in there, the ID, authorization, clicks in, there we go. We just got information back on this processor. We can see that processor's current status is stopped. Uh, the last run for a refresh, uh, information about the processor. So nice information, you may want to log for your server so you can keep track of how much is going in and out. If you don't want to use the NiFi reporting functionality, uh, but here we go. We get the information on this processor. Okay, so now let's go ahead and manipulate one. And inside of the next one we have is, next one we'll use is uh, the run status details, Corey. So this requires, if we go back to our documentation one more time, and we can see, Let's get rid of this code here. Okay. Documentation. And I said, let's do run status details. Submit a query to retrieve the run status details of all processors that are in the given list of processor IDs. So this then lets us submit multiple processor IDs, uh, but we only have the one, so we're not too worried about it. And we'll go ahead and run this one. So processors forward slash Rodden status details queries. Okay. We provide in the body our list. So we can click on here and get more details. So click on the type, so that's the link. We can see, okay, processor ID. Uh, it can be an array of strings. And the ideas of all processors whose status details should be provided. So this is our list that we're creating here. So an example, great to have, right? Processor IDs, values. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that. We're just gonna do one. And in here, processor status ID. Uh, and you'll get the same one from over here. So let's grab this processor ID. So like we said, this one doesn't get passed as a parameter. It was part of a body, right? Here we go. So we create our JSON body. Uh, as according to the example, processor IDs is what we're going to pass in the body. Uh, oh, one of the most important things I keep, I haven't remembered because I already have set up is, uh, let's go ahead and jump back over there real quick. When you're looking at all these, you need to remember what type of, uh, request you're providing. So in this case, this is a post for us to get this one, which is why we're providing a body as well. Uh, the other one was a get the processors, get Right, um, so make sure you're changing your Thunder Client if you're setting this up yourself or you're setting it up in a real world environment to reflect what is listed in the list as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump back over. So this one is a post request, so we have it set up here. We can change it to post if it's not already set. Put in our URL, provide our list, and now we can go ahead and send it. Header is still there, authorization, content type, application JSON, body, send. And there we go. So now we got our information back. 
You can see it's on version nine. Here's the client ID for what we requested. Uh, the permissions can read, can write. And then we have the status right here is stopped. And current active or the active thread count as well. So you know what? I'd like to change this one and go ahead and change the run status to run. So let's go ahead and do that. So we take this processor ID and we're going to utilize this other endpoint called processors forward slash the ID and then run state. And inside of this one, we go ahead and provide our ID for the parameter. And then let's go ahead and jump back over our documentation so we can see how we use this one. Run status. So we scroll down here, we can see run status. It is a put. And we need to provide in the body. Uh, so we provide ID in the path as a string. And then we provide inside the body processor run status entry. So in here, we provide a revision, a state. So the revision for this request response, you can see, uh, the revision is required for any mutable flow request and is included in all responses. So we have to provide the revision. Uh, and then we have a run status of the processor. So the allowable values are running, stopped, disabled, and run once. So let's go ahead and do running. And here's an example. We can see, here we go, expand it. We can see exactly what it's asking for, revision, or the version, which is your revision looks like. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at the example I have created already. Switch back over to VS Code. And from here, so I've already got the URL built out as a put. The ID is in there, our ID is populated, which I already populated it. We still have our header for the authorization, content type, passing up, we're using the body, passing it as JSON. Here's our JSON. Uh, and then from here, we need to provide the version number, right? Well, how do I do that? I can also provide last modified if I want. We want it, I said I wanted to do running, change the state from stopped right now to running. And then, Let's go back over to this one. We can see we're on version nine for this processor. So let's see what happens when we try to do version nine. First of all, let's just confirm that our processor is in the state. So processor refresh, it is stopped. So now we know we're starting from there. We'll jump back over. And let's go ahead and say we saw up here, last one was nine. So let's See happens when we put nine in here. Click send. Ah, and then we'll find processor with ID. Oh, did I forget the right ID? My bad. Let's go ahead and jump over here. Uh, query. There we go. Submit it. Went from nine to ten. Okay, so we get a new version for the revision. Under revision, we get a new version number. Uh, who it was last modified by. And then we can see the information about this processor. So where it's positioned on the canvas, permission information, the bulletin information, uh, generate flow file, we know what it's called. So here's a name, here's the type of processor it is, uh, the group it's part of. And then we can see the state is now running. Well, is that true? It says successful. Let's go ahead and jump over there and confirm this. Oops, my bad. So there we go. We can see that this processor is currently running and we did not manipulate this from the UI. We did it from the NiFi REST API. Uh, so what we could do is, well, let's go ahead and change this. Let's, let's take this one all the way back to, let's disable this processor, right? So we're in a running state right now. Let's just disable it. Uh, so if we look at our documentation, that was an option in there. Now, you can, should be able to jump straight to disabled. Uh, actually, I can't remember. Let's go look. Uh, can you go straight? No, you have to stop and then disable, right? So let's go ahead and do that then. Uh, over here, we're good. So this is where we're at now. Okay, it's running. We wanted to make sure that we get it correctly. So we just go in here and we see, okay, allowable is running, stop, disabled. So we want to go to stopped. 
go ahead and jump into VS Code. Use the Thunder Client again. And we know we're on revision 10. Let's go ahead and go to body. Let's change the state now to stopped. Let's go ahead and submit this. Okay, that did not work. So uh, 9 null ID is not the most up-to-date revision. This component appears to be have been modified. So we know the last time we ran it, it was a nine. We ran, we sent this request, it changed it to version 10. So now it's on 10. Let's see, do we, that means we updated to 10 then, right? Oh, there you go. Now it's on 11. So we need to put it in the state that it's currently in to pass that. So you gotta make sure you know that. So keep that in mind, if you were gonna manipulate this programmatically, you'd have to go look up the current state, grab that, and then populate that with the value. Now we're in 11. We can scroll down, it says stopped. So that means next, we should be able to change this to a disabled status, right? And we're not gonna look at the canvas yet. We're just gonna go in here, change this to disabled. And we know we're on, scroll back up here, 11. So 11, bend, we're on 12 now. For that processor, we can scroll down and see if state's disabled, successful. And let's go ahead and jump back into the canvas on the UI side and see what we get. Jump over here, refresh. Oh, we don't have to. It's already refreshing. It says disabled. So there you go. These are the, just some basic examples on how to use an FI API. There's a lot of different options in here. Uh, I mean, think about it. You could back up entire flows, right? You could, I mean, you can manipulate all this. You could rebuild a flow if you wanted to, I guess. Uh, if you didn't want to do it from a template, you get the option to use, there's template endpoints in here too. Uh, data transfer. So push data around and to and out of, site to sites, the tenant information, uh, funnels, system diagnostics versions. Like there's a lot to play with in here. It gives you a lot of options for, maybe you have something that might require you to use the API that you could definitely utilize. And there you go, that's how you can use it, uh, get you started on using it and start learning it yourself so you can do a lot more with it. Well, if you've got any questions, definitely feel free to ask down below in the comments. The links are down there in the description. And hopefully the uh, repo providing the Docker file and the JSON file for this made it a little bit easier for you to get it up and running and experiment with it yourself. Oh, see you in the next video.